When you want to get off the darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too What's the name of the white whale that's in here? This one right here? Yes. That's Matwa, and then we have another really, really big white oh. whale. That is Nelluar. Okay. What is the max white whale? 3,000 pounds? Yeah, our largest is just over 2,000. So. Oh, 2,000 pounds. And they said it was under the best. Like 10,000. It's phenomenal. Yeah. The max thing is still up for people. As you can see, it's kind of crowded in here. They had the whole stadium almost full when they brought Connor, us in. Connor, we're not playing in the water, but we're not. Did you see that other toy? Okay, we're not on the lookout for time. So how deep is the pool? This is, so this whole back area is about 25 feet, and then the front area is almost 30. Wow. Nice. So this is Tyonek. Um, Tyonek is actually the first ever successfully rescued and rehabilitated blue whale in the entire world. Uh, he's from the Cook in the population of blue whales, which is less than 300 members. Um, one really cool thing is that Cyril San Antonio is the most successful zoological facility in the U.S. when it comes to having blue calves born. Which is really cool about that is that we condition our trained our moms to allow us to take milk samples. Uh, those milk samples throughout the years help us to actually make a formula for a blue whale. So, something we trained here in um, Texas by getting those milk samples. We run that sample through a milk analysis, and now the zoological community as a whole, with their storage aquarium, shed, sea world, now is know how to make a formula for a blue whale, which actually helps uh, in his rescue rehabilitation. Um, one really cool thing about him, um, so he was found up on a beach in Alaska. I uh, was rescued by the Alaska Sea Life Center. Um, <laughs> oh wow, look at that. Say hi everybody. Hi. Um, so the, um, That was pretty neat. That was cute. Yeah, look at him. And this is Tony. Oh. 
Um, so, he was deemed non-releasable by the U.S. government. Anytime a uh, cetacean, or that's a whale or dolphin, strands in U.S. waters, um, it's actually a government call whether that animal is releasable or not. In his case, he had some medical issues. Uh, he had a collapsed lung and some other things going on that uh, they felt it was best that he spent the rest of his life in being care. And now he's an ambassador, not only for his population of blue whales, but cetaceans as a whole. Uh, and the same things that hold true with blue whales on the coast, hold true to here on our Texas uh, coast as well. Uh, things like, you know, a dolphin strands, calling somebody that knows what to do with that animal, not trying to push it back into the water uh, and getting the stranding network involved. Yeah. Um, this is what I'm on right now. This platform is a scale, and this actually helps us to get a weekly weight on our animals. The most important thing is that our animals live healthy and enriched lives. Part of that is maintaining a, a proper body weight. So I'm going to move out of the way. JJ and I said Adam Pearl, both born in our SeaWorld parks up here. Uh, you'll see them come up. They lift their tail loops up. We do that because it's pretty. We do that because it actually um, helps us to get an accurate weight for that animal. Uh, years and years ago. Somebody looked at that weight that, that helps uh, started because of their health, and they go, wow, that looks really pretty. So in our presentations, you'll see the killer whales with the dolphins slide out, with their tails up. It all started with health care, and somebody's like, wow, that's a cool photo. So I'll get out of her way. I'm going to talk to you guys about Atlas Brook. Come on, little man. Come on, little man. Come on, little man.